We're gonna print something in PLA, but use PETG as a support. Stay right where you are. Hey everyone, welcome back to This Printed Thing. My name's Mike, and have you ever had to print something on your 3D printer that required supports and have just been unhappy with the results on the under part of your part? Maybe you have a printer that can do multiple materials. So you go out and buy the support material, either PLA support material or a dissolvable support material but that stuff is really expensive. Is there a better way? Well, maybe there is. Today we're gonna to print something in PLA, but use PETG as a support material or a support interface. Let's get to Bamboo Studio. So I have here loaded up on my build plate in Bamboo Studio, a Minecrafty type looking llama and I chose this model because it has a lot of these uh, these blocky parts that are just a straight level surface but something that needs to be supported or else it will fail and fail spectacularly so normally what you would do is you would just tell your slicer yes I want to use supports and I like to go on build plate only and then you slice it and then you get this kind of stuff and what it does is it creates this um, this kind of mesh interface that has a little bit of a gap from between the top of the interface to the bottom of the model so yeah it does print that on top of the uh, the interface material but it's easy to to pull away or to snap off but what you get underneath is a surface that kind of droops a little bit because it had to droop a little to rest on this interface surface so what we're going to do is we're going to print these supports still in PLA, but this interface part will be PETG. And since PLA and PETG do not stick well together, it will just kind of fall off. So what we're going to do, or at least what I like to do, is... Uh, let's see top Z distance that's this gap here so we're actually gonna make that zero we want it to print right on the interface uh, the interface layers and top interface spacing so this is the the distance between the lines of your interface layers we actually want this to be zero. What that'll do is it'll make it a solid interface layer. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna change the settings for filament for supports. So we want we want to let the base be default, which will be our PLA. And for the support interface, we're gonna change that to PETG. Now in slot 4 of my Bamboo X1 Carbon, um, the, the AMS, I have orange PETG from Hatchbox loaded. And the model itself will be printed in a white Sunlu PLA Plus. So at this point, oh another thing I like to do is increase the number of layers from two to three for the interface and so that'll just make sure that we have a good solid slab of PETG for the PLA to rest on. We're gonna slice that up now you'll see here any place that the 
model touches the support, it's just going to rest right on PETG. And it goes ahead and, and puts that PETG in all layers that have the support, which is fine. I don't really care. But we see this is going to take almost three hours on our bamboo because it's going to spend a lot of that time um, changing between the PLA to the PETG. It has to purge the PLA from the nozzle and put in PETG. It only has to do that on these layers though. So let's get that started. One other thing that I probably should mention is that you don't want to end up with any of this PETG mixed in with the PLA on these layers where it prints on the model itself because well that can do two things for you one it can look really bad but two it can also make these layers somewhat weak because well as I said before PLA and PEG, PETG do not stick well together so if you have them mixed together you're gonna have something that's uh, questionable so what you do is you go up to these flushing volumes here and going from our white PLA to the PETG I'm not as concerned about but going back from the PETG to the white yeah we want to make sure that's nice and high 443 millimeters is probably enough for this type of application so we'll go ahead and stick with that and we'll re-slice it and send it to the printer So the time did get away from me and it is the next day, but you can see here everywhere that there was an overhang from the build plate up, it put orange pet G or PETG under it and, and you can see that even where it didn't need it, if it was, if it was anywhere in that layer it go it went ahead and put that PETG into the support. Well let's get it off the build plate and let's get these supports off. So here we are with the llama off the build plate and you probably can't see it very well on camera but it seems like everywhere that we have one of these orange lines in the uh, support we also have a little bit of uh, deformation here in the the skin of our model and so my guess is that we probably could have purged a little bit more from the nozzle just to make sure that we were only pushing PLA through the nozzle while we were printing these layers of the model but let's see how well these supports come off So the challenge with this model, I've printed it before, um, before doing it this way, and these legs here are kind of delicate, so we don't want to just start ripping things off or else we'll end up breaking the legs. So we kind of want to be delicate and just kind of break off the support piece by piece. So I grabbed a, a pair of pliers to kind of help me rip the support rather than just try to break it off all at once. So I've got the front of the legs exposed here and you can see that the the support comes off of the PETG nicely so once we get all the support cleaned away we can work on just 
peeling this off you can see it's it's also separating so it'll just be a matter of peeling that off and there we go we have a nice orange bottom here these will just come off the sides Those just kind of popped right off. This is just peeling off. We might have a little bit of cleanup to do against the skin itself. So you can see we're down to these last little bits of orange. They're being a little bit stubborn, so I grabbed a box cutter. Hopefully with this sharp blade, I can just kind of get under it and peel it up. But if you can see this on the camera, these bottoms where the support was are very smooth. Well, let's see if we can get this finished up. So there we go. All the supports have been removed and nothing is sagging. Everything is smooth. Success. Just for gits and shiggles, I printed out another llama that had all PLA for supports and I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but you'll see that you don't get a solid interface you get this kind of mesh material or I suppose a better way to describe is it if you're eating a bowl of Chex cereal that's kind of the surface of the cereal pieces but we'll see how easy it is to get this off so this also comes off fairly easy however you get a uh, surface underneath that's a little less than desirable, but it still works just fine. Let's pull the rest off. So I pretty much pulled away all of the base of the supports and what I'm left with is the support interface, uh, except for a few pieces of the base here. But I just kind of peel this away and it does peel away nice and clean and it gives an acceptable surface underneath, but it's not as good as the surface that we got when we used PETG. I'm still kind of struggling to pull this stuff away. I'm trying to do it without breaking the llama's legs. There. Success at last. We have a few stragglers here of support interface material. Here we go. I think we got it all. But as hopefully you can see, you have a lot of uh, kind of graininess and messiness of the, of the bottom surface. Again, it works. It looks okay. I mean, Bamboo Studio and the X1 Carbon do a good job of, of making this work, but it looks like some of the uh, support interface held on to stuff that's supposed to stay on the model. And so it kind of peeled some of that off too. But yeah, we can do a comparison here. This surface that where we use the PETG looks way better than this surface where we just use regular PLA for the interface. So there you go. With using PETG as a support interface and without. At the end of the day, both look good and it isn't until you get really close and start looking at the undersides of things that things really start to 
show a difference. The PET G makes a huge difference in the surface quality of your supported parts. And that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy content about 3D printing, consider subscribing. And please, if you liked this video, give that like button a mash. And until next time, go fire up those 3D printers and make something awesome.